Welcome to Mrs. Long's second video on the poem Felix Randall. Uh, at the end of the last video, we were looking at the last few lines of the octave, and we're now moving on to the sestet. Remember that the change um, between the two, uh, between the octave and the sestet, between the two parts of the poem, um, is one of tone and we're getting a different perspective from the speaker who is a priest who was tending to Felix Randall when he was sick and in his death. His reaction to Felix Randall's death in the octave is quite matter of fact, more removed and objective. Um, it was part of his duty to tend and um, counsel the sick man. However, the first line of the sestet tells us that this wasn't just any part any day at the office for the priest. He says this, seeing the sick endears them to us, us too it endears. And so we've got this reciprocal relationship. So endears means to become more dear, to become more special. So as um, the priest was ministering to Felix Randall, he became closer to him and then the feeling was mutual and reciprocated. Um, perhaps you can be familiar with that, this idea. Uh, if you have gone through something quite traumatic and you've gone through it with somebody, with somebody else, perhaps um, you were both involved in a car accident or something like that, or you witnessed something traumatic, um, going through something uh, difficult with somebody else can often make you closer, bring you together. Uh, because you have this shared experience. And so the shared experience of the final days in Felix Randall's life has definitely um, caused a closer relationship between the two. And as a result, now we see a more personal response to his death. Note how the alliteration um, links all the words to do with closeness. Tongue, taught, touch, tears, touched. Okay, so you've got this um, now touch, physically touched. Okay, um, so you can, if your touch had quenched thy tears, perhaps if Felix was crying, a hand on the shoulder, but tears touched my heart. In other words, touched as in um, created an emotional bond. Also note the use of the personal pronouns. My tongue had taught thee comfort, touched had quenched thy tears, thy tears that touched my heart. So thy, thee and my, both parties are involved in this closeness. And you'll see also the repetition of um, several words here, tears, touched, um, and then the Felix, poor Felix Randall. It's almost as if um, the priest is trying to console him, um, as I suppose you would if somebody was in your presence and they were crying. I, I think it also, you can also have a closeness with somebody who is allowing you to see them in their moment of weakness. You can imagine that someone like Felix Randall would not often break down um, into tears or emotions, but illness or sickness or disease can do this to a person. Um, and remember in the previous stanza, it said a sickness broke him. So you've got this humbled, very um, emotionally and physically distressed person who is gaining a lot of comfort from the man who is um, ministering to him during this time. So definitely a far more um, emotive relationship between these two. <coughs> if we look, excuse me, at the final three lines, um, we've got a reminder of Felix in his prime. Okay? And as I mentioned in the previous video, that's sort of how you want to remember somebody who uh, perhaps was not quite themselves in their final days. Often people who have um, an illness, they become thin, they struggle, 
um, to eat, they, they don't breathe very well, perhaps they've been in a coma or not able to communicate. And that's not really the last lasting image you want of somebody. Unfortunately, it often is because um, seeing somebody in that position is quite traumatic for the, the person who is left behind, as it were. But here the priest is managing to deal with his emotions by thinking of Felix in his in his powerful youth. And you've got that lovely um, image there of him being powerful amidst peers. In other words, he was a man amongst men. He was bigger and stronger than the people around him. And he, when he died, he was how he was far from that. How far from then forethought of. Uh, all the more boisterous years, that lovely um, word that makes us think of this really jolly, happy, um, physically imposing young man. And we can see the, the reference to him being physically Im imposing because he's um, hammering molten metal at a, at a random grim forge, this very sort of um, dark image of this man bashing away, uh, making these metal sh horseshoes. And he um, could command these large horses, the great gray dray horse, awesome alliteration and, and um, assonance there as well. And then, of course, the powerful beast sound, um, sound bright and battering sandal. So we, you see how we, we're kind of... Um, almost moving through the priest's emotional response to death as his, um, as his response is changing. And this, those of you who know anything about psychology, they talk about the, the stages of grief. So the priest initially has this, oh, he's dead, he's passed on, this is what I expected. Then what they went through together and his sadness at his passing and then maybe helping himself deal with his death by remembering Felix Randall in his prime. So at first, we all agree, I think, that it, it seems to be a fairly complex poem because of the language used. But when you look at it a little bit more closely, it's quite easy to pick out the different parts of the poem. And of course, this lovely sonnet structure really helps us with that. So I hope you now have a better understanding of Felix Randall, and um, I will see you in the next video.